We need more walking paths. There's so much walking paths. Yeah. Like and this yeah. is what I'm going to buy. I'm going to go in there and buy it. Yeah, that's how so, the government actually has to have a budget. Yes. Okay. We're recording us now. Uh -huh. Oh, five tonight. I'm late, huh? For a very important date. Okay. I count to 60 really slow. There you go. Yeah. I think it's 36. Because I was trying to be consistent. <laughs> it was consistent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's 3672? Uh -huh. No, three in the end. Okay. Thank you. You're working too hard. It's in there twice somewhere. See, now we got more company. There we go. Yeah. Hi. Now we got a quorum plus, huh? Yeah. I am. Now we're official. We're just Enjoy. rolling here. <laughs> Hello, Commissioner. Nice to meet you. Okay, I would like to call the March 2nd Planning and Zoning Public Hearing Meeting to order, please. Roll call, please. Roll call. Um, so, Commissioner Ochoa? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Commissioner H Hollinshead? Here. <laughs> Commissioner McCurr? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Commissioner Wood? Absent. And Kindred, isn't that the last one? Who's that? Sandy Springrose. Yeah, and JD is absent. <clears throat> so My apologies to our new commissioner, Kendrick. <laughs> the name is on the digital version, but it didn't come on the print version. <laughs> commissioner Kendred? Kendred, here. Kendred? Yes, here. Quorum. Okay. Quorum. okay, then we can stand for the pledge, can't we? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, now we're to the meeting minutes from our January 5th meeting when we were last together. Okay, please have a motion for approval. I'll make a motion. And a second. I'll second. Rook here. Can we do a voice vote for the minutes? Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes from our January meeting? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We're all good. We get along. Thank you. This is a little bit different style we have today than what we're used to. So if I make any mistakes, don't don't we hesitate to correct me. We're training too. Oh, okay. Madam we're all Chairman, training. So Can I get my trustee sign now? <laughs> <laughs> we have our first public hearing is about the address of 39172 and 39120 Green Bay Road. Tractor Supply Company was going for a map amendment and a plan development. Lost my map thing. Just one second, I find a piece of paper will give you more dis descriptions.
give you a little background to proposed map amendment. Description of proposed or requested action. The proposed property is located, is currently zoned suburban residential in the district. The requested action is to be rezoned to a B1 business district. This property resides in the B-1 North Green Bay Road Overlay District and the B1 zoning exists throughout the trade area. If you are going to give any testimony tonight or talk before us, I need to swear you in ahead of time. So if you could please um, stand and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give tonight is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Could I have a motion to open the public hearing? I'll make a motion. And a second? I'll second. Look here. Thank you. <clears throat> if you'd like to come forward and talk to the microphone. You need microphone. to vote, Madam Chairman. Voice vote's fine. Voice vote? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, go ahead and come forward. Sorry about that. Just give us a little insight. My name is Harold Fay. I'm with Spaceco Inc. We are doing the site civil for this work. I'm here on behalf of Primax Properties, who is the developer of this site. Um, they are headquartered out of North Carolina. So that's why I'm here. We are headquartered out of Rosemont, and I work in the satellite office in Morris. Oh. And obviously, the lease will be for a tractor supply company. Um, I think I'll just start with a, just kind of a general overview of tractor supply. So they they sell a wide range of goods from tools to sporting goods to blue collar clothing, uh, all the way up to everything for livestock and pets. So that's food, mm -hmm. any equipment needed, um, feed, troughs, things like that. Um, that actually is almost 50% of their sales is livestock and pets. Oh. So if you see, um, the the north, just north of the building there, that concrete area, it's a fenced outdoor display area, as I'll refer to as the FOD. That is where the larger bulk items for, you know, your horses, you know, fence posts, large troughs, uh, any type of coops or anything like that, that'll be stored out there. Basically, anything that doesn't make sense to be in the building um, will be out there in the uh, fenced outdoor display area. Uh, when it comes to employment, uh, every manager has almost always has been a manager at a past tractor squad. Um, in total, they have approximately 12 to 20 employees with four to six there at a time. Um, they pride themselves on their employees having the knowledge of what they're selling. They, they want their employees to live the lifestyle, so they hope to find someone who is into horsing or farming or welding. So they can speak on what they are selling, and they do hire locally, and and promote you know um, within the hiring. Within, so. That's good. Um, with that, I, I guess I'll open it up to you guys if if you need me to expand on anything or have any questions. Commissioner Hollingstead, any questions? Mm, nothing right now. No. All right. No. No. To be continued. Commissioner McCure? Nothing, nothing at this time. Okay. Not at this moment. Thank you. <laughs> but I will. I just have a quick question. Yeah. Um, you're going to be selling food for livestock and that, but you're not going to actually be selling the livestock, correct? No. Okay. No four legged creatures on the checkout counter. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. That's good information. Okay. 
We move to a motion to open public comment. Make a motion. And a second. <clears throat> I'll second. McCure. All in favor of opening public comment, voice vote, please. Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. I don't think we have anybody here for public comment. Then we move to a motion to close public comment. Make a motion. In a second. Last second. Wilson. Thank you. Okay. Public comment has been closed. Do we have any old business to discuss tonight? Can I suggest, uh, Madam Chair, that you uh, have uh, uh, our planning consultant, Natalia, uh, go through the, uh, how do you say your last name again? Demavisova. Okay, can that. Go by <laughs> Natalia. <laughs> Could you have her go through uh, um, the review and, and the planning memo that she provided with, so we sure we have on the record for uh, some of the um, uh, required zoning um, um, departures, and so mm -hmm. we uh, can discuss that if there's any specifics and issues that need to be addressed along the way. So. Perfect. That, Great idea. Okay, thank you. So, as was just mentioned, uh, there are two requests on this on the table today, and one of them is the map amendment. Um, currently, the property is zoned uh, residential, and uh, the proposed use is not permitted. That's why the applicant is requesting to um, rezone the property into B one business district. So it appears that the proposed zoning designation is consistent with the village's 2008 comprehensive land use plan. And also the property size-wise is also in compliance with the proposed zoning designation. So uh, really uh, the proposed rezoning is consistent with the overall overlay district. Um, along Green Bay Road. Uh, the other part of the request is uh, plan development. Plan development is a conditional use permit in B1 zoning district. And uh, the applicant is, the proposed plans that, that you've seen with your packet uh, illustrate how the proposal complies with the regulations and also there are some departures from regulations that are noted there and specifically i can just briefly go over them for the record as well that um, the proposal complies with the minimum setbacks for the yards the proposal appears to comply with the uh, building height and and maybe that would be a good Time to ask the applicant to confirm that if, if that's yeah. possible. So the highest point on the gable is 30 foot. 30 foot. Okay, that's good because the zoning allows for up to 40 feet in this uh, zoning designation. So that the proposal is in compliance. Let me just make a note so I can add it to the findings as well. Uh, there is no lock coverage and there is no floor area ratio requirements for this. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, th there are no departures requested from these requirements. So the applicant is in <coughs> compliance with that. Um, the landscaping, um, you've seen the landscape plan proposed is also in compliance with the exception of the buffer zone that that is uh, the landscape setback that is required along the north property line that abuts the property that's zoned residential as well as uh, the west property line that also abuts the, the townhouse property zone residential uh, specifically the one of the departure is the reduction of the um, that landscape buffer from 20 uh, to seven feet. Uh, and then the uh, other requested departure relates to parking. Uh, I must note that it seems like the zoning ordinance is uh, 
more on the conservative side as as to um, parking um, requirements that apply to this type of uses, the retail uses. And based on the requirements, the site would need to provide 206 spaces. The site plan that's proposed um, illustrates 83 spaces. So um, technically there is there is a shortage of uh, approximately 123 spaces. And so the question would be for the applicant to um, provide a little more information on how the facility is proposed to operate and whether you um, believe that the proposed number of spaces would be adequate to accommodate this. Before you get started, I have a question. Is this 83 spaces accurate? Because if I looked at your, your topographical map correctly, it said 81 spaces for automobiles, two spaces for trailers, four spaces for handicapped, and I believe three spaces for veterans. That doesn't come to 83. That's 81 plus four plus three plus one. The most updated site plan, I believe it is 82, and that is all encompassing of all spots. So that includes ADA, veteran, and trailer. Yeah, yeah I, okay. I, I understand your confusion. The initial site plan okay. did show different numbers okay. as opposed to what was actually illustrated and striped. So that, that's more that, but I'm glad it's taken care of. So yeah, to your initial question, um, tractor supply um, on the average um, has four to six customers in their building at a time. Uh, in the heavier holidays, approximately 10 to 12. So, and they typically, um, the repeat customer only comes back once every six weeks. So most of the time, they're, again, because the livestock comes up 50% of their um, sales. So they're usually buying in bulk or their livestock or pets, and things of that nature. So in an ideal world, Tractor wants anywhere from 60, like 40, or excuse me, 50 to 70 spots in their um, ideal world. Um, we try to you know, maximize as, as much as we can based on your requirements. So we felt, you know, 80 is way over what Tractor wants, but we wanted to maximize the spots, you know, for Beach Park. So, according to Tractor, you know, they know their business, you know, better than I do. But that that is more than enough um, for for the type of traffic they have. They're more of a slow and steady all day foot traffic as regards to you know a high influx of people coming in you know, after work. Or anything like that. Thank you. I would note that on the site plan, the um, proposed measurement of the parking stall is wider than than what is required by the oh. ordinance okay so in theory if necessary if it could be restriped and in uh, according to my calculations they could gain approximately six more spaces if needed right and if i could speak to that um yeah, as, as an engineer, uh, we would love to make it, you know, the minimum and get as much as we can on their land. So that is a specific tractor um, ask, as they have usually have larger pickups. Mm -hmm. So they, they prefer that wider and longer saw as, as opposed to the minimum. So that is a tractor request. They are open to reducing that if, if, if you do ask that. But they would prefer, you know, the wider and longer saws. Yeah, it's certainly uh, what uh, would be the preference of the, uh, up to the plan commission to make that call. But given the nature of the business, it sounds like uh, that uh, is a reasonable uh, parking space uh, dimension. Okay, so um, did, did anyone have any questions about the parking or? Because that this is would be one of the requests um, to requ uh, to approve the parking reduction. Based on them saying they have four to six employees there at a time, mm -hmm. that's kind of explained it to me that they're not going to have a high volume in general. 
you know, I'm sure you're at Christmas time or something like that. You might have somebody looking at it. If you sell toys, you might sell like a, right. I'll say Fireman Fleet comparable. Do, yes. you'll, you'll have more traffic at that point, yes. but um, I can understand that. And as far as the larger spaces, I am with you on that because you're going to have trucks and trailers and <clears throat> all. Yep. In general, you want the spaces because you don't want to be hitting the guy's door next to you. Yeah. yeah. So I'd be in agreement on both of those. Be fine with that. Also, I can just say one more thing on the parking. You know, the size of the building is because they have the bulkier items. It's not because they're they're wanting more customers in there. It's more so they can get everything in there. So. Mm. Okay. Um, then I would like to move on into some of the comments that we had. And again, they involve some of the questions for the applicant to verify the, the um, information. Um, you already provided uh, a lot about uh, business uh, operation description, but there are a couple more. If, if you could verify the um, hours of operation, if known at this point, um, and also um, security measures that, that are anticipated for the site and um, your potential build out and phasing schedule, if any. Okay. So yeah, the typical hours are from eight to nine, and then on Sunday, nine to seven. Um, in, the, in the winter months, that uh, it's a little bit slower traffic, so those hours could be reduced. Um, with regards to security, um, their parking lighting is always on, and along with the lighting on the building will always be on, and then they have some lighting inside that it always remains on 24 7 for security reasons um, with regards to any type of phasing um, this will all be you know there is no protected phasing this is all to be constructed now um, obviously they will you know start with the soil erosion and sediment control first and make sure all storm water is in place before any any construction starts and then finally they'll be you know building parking utilities Okay. Uh, and if you could also comment um, about the when building operation, you mentioned there is a sales of equipment and vehicles, but is it going to be also rent? Because that no, no rent, because no uh, that that is a separate use that uh, it requires approval, which could be wrapped into the approval. But if that's not part of the business model, then doesn't need to be considered. No rent of, of vehicles or equipment. And we talked about Any repairs? That I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. I don't think they perform repairs. OK, and then uh, we can move on to question about the single family house that is on the property to the south of the main parcel that that's proposed for development um, so there is existing single family residence there uh, the property is proposed to be rezoned into b1 zoning district and uh, the question is what is the near future or distant future for that uh, residence so according to primax they want to keep that um, residential uh, they want to rezone it to be one, but it'll remain a residential house until they can find either a user or buyer. Um, in, in, in their idea, it's, it's maybe an office of some sort, just because we are in the B1. But they do want to make it, they want to go through the process to make it B1 now, just so they can have it teed up for anyone that, if they ever do find a user. Okay. But it will remain residential until then. Thank you. Uh, then we move on to look into the lighting plan. I'm sure you've seen the comments. So there are a couple spots on the parking lot, especially along the north and south property lines that uh, slightly exceed the, the foot candle maximum level measured at the property line, which is uh, tried to get to 0.5 foot candles. Um, so this is something that um, uh, could be achieved. Well, you, the engineer, <laughs> you probably know better. Uh, 
by shielding the lights or uh, repositioning the lights or adjusting the actual fixtures? Is it something that uh, you could uh, address? Yes, absolutely. Um, Primax has their own uh, lighting plan. So I, I, I will absolutely relay the message to Primax. And they, they understand that that, uh, that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I don't see that as a problem to make those changes. I'm sure that those are all taken care of. Okay. And then the other thing is that the ordinance, the zoning ordinance does require for um, the, the lighting fixture and pole specifications. Is that something you prepared to provide for? Okay. Um, moving on into the site access. So as was initially proposed and what we have in front of us, uh, the site plan shows two access points of Green Bay Road. Now Green Bay Road is the under jurisdiction of Illinois Department of Transportation and the approval is required uh, for any curb cuts and modifications to that. And it's my understanding that you worked with the IDOT and uh, why don't you tell us what the outcome of it? Well, we actually have, we've gone through our first revision with IDOT um, and they're only going to allow one access. So that is, I do have most of the day here. Um, we're going to stick with the, with the north one. Um, so yes, I doubt we'll, we'll ultimately have final final approval and final say on that. So we're only going to allow one access. We kind of went with the approach to ask us ask for as much as we could and, and then back off after after we get that. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to ground sign. So there is. Uh, one of the plan development requirements is that you provide information about the signage. Um, looks like there is a sign that is illustrated, uh, at least a placeholder for a ground sign at the north entrance, which is to stay, looks like. Um, do you have any additional information you can provide at this point, or is it something that uh, you will be providing later on? Yeah, I don't have any renderings. The only thing I can offer is it will be monument style, you know, for, for Beach Park uh, ordinance. But yes, we will, we will provide, you know, a rendering of that in the near future. Okay. Um, and landscaping, um, there's been a number of you see there's a whole page of review of uh, different landscape materials. Um, most of it is in compliance. There are some departures from the requirements in uh, resulting in fewer number of trees or shrubs. Um, overall, our landscape consultant felt that the level of landscaping provided is adequate for the property and uh, provides adequate screening. <clears throat> so um, it did not... Uh, feel this being a concern and recommended um, approval of a landscape plan the way it's uh, presented, unless there are questions. Um, one thing that is noted that uh, the site plan illustrated liquid propane tank that's uh, behind the uh, screening proposed north of the building. I uh, just wanted to make sure that it's something up to the fire marshal to approve and it may have to be screened or shifted differently than proposed. And then we have the village engineer review, uh, which have you received a copy of it? Or do you, do you, okay. We received our first letter from the village and we actually returned mm -hmm. our first So do you have any uh, issues complying with the I did not. requirements? Um, it seems you know, fairly minor. And this next review, if there's any comments, I, I feel that it'll be also very minor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, with that, um, the Planning Commission, thank you for all the information. With that, um, the Planning Commission has um, the following options. So uh, given the information that was just 
added to the application at this meeting. Um, the plan commission could uh, make a recommendation for a final plat, uh, final PD approval. Um, and uh, the, the way it's outlined in, in, the, in the staff report, but basically if there are no departures that, um, there are no additional departures based on the additional information that the applicant will just committed to provide. Um, the, the plan commission can just recommend it in um, uh, this would be this would go to the the village board. Uh, if there are any departures needed, then um, we recommend that additional required documents would uh, uh, be reviewed by the plan commission uh, at the future meeting. From what I understand and just heard, um, the applicant feels that they can address all the comments and do not anticipate additional departures. Now, I'll let the applicant speak to that. Yes, I, I feel like these departures, that, that, that's all. With the um, final PD recommendation, we also recommend to include uh, the room for potential amendments. And this could be a minor amendment. So basically any revisions that, that would not increase the level of um, the departures that's already being recommended by more than 15% would be allowed to be approved by city staff, uh, village staff. So no um, additional plan commission review and no additional <clears throat> public hearing required. Uh, if those amendments are major, meaning that they depart more than 15% of uh, what is being uh, recommended tonight, then that would require um, plan commission review. But again, no formal public hearing. So we're establishing, uh, recommending to establish this path forward for any changes that may um, come up uh, during the further design of this, not just the further design, but also future operation of this business. That sounds good. I have one question that I forgot to ask earlier. Were there any, um, do you receive any written notices from people concerning this property? No, ma'am, no, no emails, um, no phone calls. That's good. <clears throat> Uh, so let me just clarify for the additional information that what we just talked about, um, we would uh, expect the architectural details, and it's all outlined in the, in the report, uh, the signage plan and uh, the lighting fixture and pole specifications. So um, we could confirm that they comply with the requirements of the zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. they do. And they're willing to adjust it to make it comply. Yes, and then the, the remaining uh, requirements that are in the ordinance for plan development um, that are also listed in the staff report on page eight, uh, we recommend that be waived because um, those are the requirements that typically apply to um, large subdivisions or um, complex mixed use projects and really do not uh, make sense to uh, be prepared or reviewed uh, for this particular development. And with that, um, we would recommend a plan commission, if the plan commission is comfortable moving forward with the um, proposal, with the, with the request, we would recommend a number of conditions. Uh, one of them is to relates to the monument sign that any potential ground sign would be uh, actually a monument style design as opposed to pole sign. Mm -hmm. It's just something that uh, generally the village is trying to um, adhere to higher standards of signage, especially along the uh, busy corridor. Uh, the submittal exemptions, uh, it's another uh, recommended condition that uh, we would recommend that the uh, certain uh, documents that are typically required for PD that would not be required. 
uh, everything else uh, is outlined in the city engineer uh, in the village engineer review comments so that's a uh, subject uh, to be complied with um, and that's that's pretty much it so revised plans uh, the way the outline in in the st in the staff memo in this in the village engineer did, did you have any questions about any any of this was it i do but I'm, I'm going back a little bit it says sales of vehicles what type of vehicles are we talking big engine vehicles what kind of vehicles i believe it's just small tractors like loading tractors or you know small, small farm or you know people with horses Okay. You'll have um, security cameras, I'm sure, several all over the place. Yes. Park, on, parking on the, lot and uh, I'll have your, to check. what I you're storing. I'll have to check if they have anything. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And we have a number of... Um, findings of fact, which are um, required by the zoning ordinance. There's a set of findings for the MEP amendment, set of findings for uh, conditional use permit, and uh, set of findings uh, for a standards for the plan development. So if the draft findings have been outlined and included with the agenda backup. They will, again, these are draft findings for the most part that will be updated uh, with the new information that we received and clarification that we received today. Um, overall, uh, the findings uh, conclude that the, um, the proposal meets the standards of the ordinance, as they said. Yes. Would you like to have these read for the record orally, the finding of facts? No, we don't need them read into the record. Okay. Um, you have the draft. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's any questions or comments on it, um, the uh, if you
the planning commission directs the planning consultant to complete the draft findings of fact for the map amendment and conditional use permit for planned development listed in sections five and six and seven of this document. Do you need me to read the other? Well, if you, if you usually do them separately or yeah. if you do them separately, then it Would should be Would you want the two, two separate wait, together? Together? Separately, this is good. Okay. Then we would need a roll call vote, please. We're doing it for the zoning and the plan development requests. <clears throat> you have a roll call vote, please. What are we voting on here? I Commissioner Choa? I need this in development. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Hauling said? Aye. Um, Commissioner McCure? I'm sorry, I missed a turn here. What are we voting on? Yeah, th so this is basically to There's recommend, no um, to direct uh, your planning consultant to update the findings per the information that was presented tonight. Okay, all right. And the plan development. Commissioner Wood? He's absent. He's not here. No. Uh, Commissioner Ken Rudd? I keep on saying your name wrong. I'm sorry. Aye. <laughs> you them all? No. You didn't call Commissioner Wilson. Wilson. Did I said Wilson. <laughs> I thought that was wood. I, yeah, I heard wood. <laughs> I heard wood, too. We're all training. That yeah. Rusty. We're a little rusty. Yeah, missed a month. Life is a big train. And this will go before the Board of Trustees. <laughs> We're just a recommending body, and they get the final say. <laughs> when is... when? So was it, did, I thought there was... Uh, we need another motion to make that yes, recommendation. Yes, so there are two okay. other yeah. motions. So that the okay. uh, board approved the uh, map. Go ahead. So there's there's number two? Yep. Yeah. Yep, I'll read it. Mm -hmm. so we did the... Yeah, we just did this one. This one. Now we, we need two. Did this one and this one. Okay, those three. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to be thinking about the... Uh, that the plan commission recommends the village board approval of a map amendment to change the zoning designation of the property at 39172 and 39120 North Green Bay Road from suburban residential district to a business district one within the Wadsworth Road, Green Bay Road corridor overlay district. And then we'll have a vote on a roll call vote on that. Second. Do the other one right together? Okay. This is the plan commission recommends the village board approval of a plan development conditional use permit with the plan development departures, which would allow the development at 39172 and 39120 North Green Bay Road as outlined in the February 21st, 2023 planning and zoning <laughs> consultants memorandum subject to the following conditions. The conditions as noted on the report is fine. You don't have to read them. That's oh okay. Yeah. Thank you. Your roll call vote, please. Uh, we need a motion to second, Madam Chair. A motion to vote on the two motions that were just presented to you, two and three. I'll make a motion. And a second, please. <clears throat> a second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Ochoa? Aye. Commissioner Hollingshead? Aye. Commissioner McCurr? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. And can you please tell me your how to pronounce your last name? I don't want to keep on getting it wrong. Kindred. Kendrick. Like kindred spirits. Kindred spirits. Yeah. Kindred. Kindred. Yes. Aye. Kindred. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Best way to get it right. <laughs> What date will this go before the Board of Trustees? Um, that's a good question. If I can get it done tomorrow, it will be March 9th. Okay. Uh, I'll consult with Trustee Wells on his preference first, though, I think. Okay, thank you. And it's usually on the second or the fourth Thursday of the month in yeah. the same place. Yeah. Trustee Wells. Good. <laughs> Do you have anything you would like to share with us from the board? I would just like to welcome our newest board member. Yes. I think it's someone had the introductory position. She introduced herself to everybody, I believe, right? <laughs> I'm <up. laughs> Every, Everybody met me. <laughs> just to make sure. I just didn't make it a public announcement. <laughs> But you're public now, see? Yeah. You want us to make it a motion? <laughs> Say that. Oh. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Our motion is we're glad you're with us. I second. Yep. <laughs> I'll third it. All in favor? <laughs> do, do we need to do a roll call? Yeah. <laughs> Trustee Wells, any old business to share with us? No. no? New business besides what we just went through? Uh, no, I mean, no, we just I did new to, business, didn't we? It has. We try hard. Uh, Madam Chair, if I could, on uh, just one announcement. Uh, um, um, we do have that uh, plan commission training session. I didn't hear from everybody, uh, not that I needed to. Um, so I'm just bringing it up now again for uh, your convenience. April 20th, uh, we're still waiting for the second professional to be identified. And once that does, uh, once that person's identified, we'll get all the details out. But it's just um, April 20th at 6 p.m. So looking forward to a couple hours of, you know, going through the process procedures, you know, different types of development and everything else. So. Thank you. That's all that I have. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Now we come to our last fun thing to do. All in favor of adjourning? Have an adjournment of the meeting? Aye. Voice vote, please. <laughs> Who's ready to adjourn and warm up our cars? <laughs> <laughs> it's All cold favor. out there. Yeah, no. Aye. 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 Yeah. Anybody stays here until the next meeting. Thank you so much for enlightening yeah. us. And commissioners, thank you so much for coming tonight. It's a cold night out there, but I really appreciate your input. Thank you. We'll have fun in April.